Sawete to Scipuli. So today we are doing the third video for chapter three in Latin for the new millennium. Today we are going to learn how to use the genitive and the vocative cases, and we're also going to talk a little bit about how to, to um, use prepositional phrases. So before we learn the genitive and vocative, let's do a little review of the two um, cases that we've already learned, the nominative and the accusative. The nominative is used to show the subject or the predicate nominative if you have a verb, the verb to be. And the accusative is used to show direct object. And on this side of the slide, I have reminded you of the first declension and second declension singular and plural nominatives, uh, nominative endings, and accusative endings here. Now, <coughs> the genitive case, like the nominative case, has more than one use, okay? But today we're going to learn just the, the, the most basic and often most common use of the genitive, um, which is to show possession. Um, so in English, we show possession by using an apostrophe S if it's singular, an S apostrophe if it's plural, or we can also say it by um, show possession by saying of the blank, of the whatever. Okay. So let's look at these examples that we have here. The casas amicorum, filium weary, animus filii. Now, I've also shown you guys, reminded you guys, of the first and second declension, singular and plural, genitive endings over here. So we can tell that amicorum is our genitive ending, weary is our genitive ending, and filii, that's our genitive, okay? And how are we going to um, translate these? Well, since amicorum is plural, we can say the houses of the friends, or we can say the friends, S apostrophe, houses. For the man's son, we can say the filium weary, um, the son of the man, or we can also say the man's son, apostrophe S. And animus filii, the spirit of the son, or the son's spirit, okay? So any of the ways that you choose to um, translate it in English is absolutely fine. Um, uh, you can either say S apostrophe, apostrophe S, or of the whatever. Now, the vocative case, and again, I've reviewed those endings over here with you. It's the same as the nominative um, in the first declension. And the second declension plural, the vocative ending is the same as the nominative. But of course, remember, you have to remember your law, your rules. If you have a U.S. in the nominative, it's an E in the vocative. An I U.S. in the nominative, a long I in the vocative, a single long I. Um, and if it's an R in the nominative, it's an R in the vocative. This is used to show direct address. Okay, so if you were directly addressing someone, as if I were to say, um, Samantha, go to your room, or something like that. I'm directly addressing Samantha, so her name would be in the vocative. Um, you can choose to do the vocative in, a, in two ways in English. You can either say sort of the, the word or the name, which is a comma afterwards, which is how we would usually do it in English. You can also say, oh, whatever. Um, because we also sometimes do that in English. Okay. So we have some examples here. Amike, Pueri, and Filia. Of course, we're directly addressing all three of these. So we have friend or oh friend. Pueri, boys or oh boys. And Filia, daughter or oh daughter. Okay. The last little thing we need to talk about today is prepositional phrases. Now, a preposition... Um, with a noun, and sometimes that noun is being, is being described by an adjective, together is called a prepositional phrase, okay? Your preposition and its object. In English, we have tons of prepositions, as they do in Latin, too, as well. In, on, into, with, near, under, by, from, to, around, over, across, all of these are prepositional phrases, okay? And in English, we also have an object of the preposition, okay? In Latin... Um, prepositions will take a particular case, a specific case, and usually this is going to be the ablative um, or the accusative, and actually there are more prepositions that take the accusative than the ablative, um, but the most common prepositions tend to take the ablative, by the way. <laughs> there is one that I can think of that takes the genitive, and it's a little bit of a weird preposition, um, or sometimes um, one preposition can take both an ablative or an accusative, and depending on which case it's taking, it'll 
um, affect how you translate the proposition. We're not going to talk about any of those right now. We're only going to talk about, actually, two prepositions that take the ablative case, and they're in your vocab for this week. In takes the ablative. Actually, this is one of those ones that takes the accusative. We're not going to talk about that today. In plus the ablative means in or on. So in wea, in rewo, in kasi. So um, on the road, in the river, or in the houses. Right. Kum also takes the prep uh, also takes the ablative, and it means with. So kum wiro, kum amikis, kum filiabis, with a man, with friends, or with the daughters. Now let me take this opportunity to point out to you that since philia, daughter, and phili, philia, son, um, would both have the same dative and ablative plural, philiis, um, philia, daughter, takes a different ablative and dative plural, okay? Ablative and dative plural, plural of, of uh, daughter is philiabus, with the daughters, okay? Now, Sometimes, and we're going to talk about this more throughout the rest of the year, you're going to have um, a prepositional phrase in English that's only one word in Latin. Okay, so sometimes um, we have to translate Latin uh, into English as a prepositional phrase, even though it's not a prepositional phrase in Latin. And a good example from your vocab this week is domi, which translates at home, right? Domi always translates at home. Um, and that's because it's specialized use of that word that we're going to talk about later on um, in the year. And um, even though it's not a prepositional phrase in Latin, it is a prepositional phrase in English. Okay, well, take good notes. I will see you tomorrow in class and have a lovely evening.